Hello friends and welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I talk about different stories from the wonderful Star Trek universe. 50 years and a few weeks ago, NBC aired a new episode of the second season of the classic Star Trek show called Bread and Circuses, and these are my honest opinions about it. When Gene Roddenberry pitched Star Trek to different networks, one of the main ideas was the idea of parallel Earths. And he used this idea from time to time on the show. A few weeks ago we talked about uh, a Gene Roddenberry episode called The Omega Syndrome, which had a parallel Earth, and this episode also features another parallel Earth. We also had a Nazi planet a few weeks earlier, so having an ancient Rome in 20th century in this one doesn't seem that crazy. The Enterprise finds remains of a beagle. The SS Beagle. A ship captained by a certain RM Medic, an old friend of Captain Kirk who was kicked out of the Academy. When the Enterprise searches for possible survivors, they intercept a TV broadcast in which they see a newsreel in which a Roman gladiator kills a barbarian in front of a painted Colosseum background. The dead man was uh, William Harrison, who Spock identifies as an officer from the Beagle, which means that Kirk and company need to go check the planet and find out what the hell is going on. They beam down to the planet Bronson Canyon, and while Spock and McCoy have some usual banter, somebody starts shooting at them. The attacker is Flavius Maximus, a former gladiator, and the children of the sun. No, that's not a Christian rock band, that's a group of fugitive slaves who found God, or more specifically, the sun. Flavius thinks they might be Roman spies, and wants to shoot them, but he takes them to their leader Septimus, who hates violence and prefers talking with the strangers. During a small tea party, we are told that this planet's ruling force is what would happen if Earth's Roman Empire would never fall, but would make it till the 20th century. This is a fascinating thought, to be honest, and I really like uh, the idea of combining ancient Rome with quote-unquote modern 20th century Earth, and I think that's the main problem I have with this episode. I love the idea, but not really the execution. But we also find out that their first citizen, aka Princeps Inter Pares, is called Medicus, which of course means that it's probably Captain Medic. So for the third time, at least for the third time as far as I can remember, we have a story in which a starship captain, who of course Kirk personally knows, got to a planet which has a human-like population, gets to a position of power and becomes the story's bad guy. And it's getting pretty repetitive, to be honest. And as every single time, Kirk must get to the former captain and get rid of him. Flavius tries to bring them to Rome, but they get caught by the police and end up in jail, just like we've seen many times before. Kirk claims that he must he must talk to the first citizen, and of course the police officers can contact their equivalent of a prime minister because a captive criminal wants to speak with him. We are told now about Flavius that he was a famous gladiator before he heard the sun and became a believer. He also tries uh, to talk about Mercus, but the police officers arrive and take him to the gladiator arena. Kirk, Spock and McCoy try to escape out of the jail using the oldest trick in the book by pretending that McCoy is sick. When they get the chance they try to attack the officers, but they are soon stopped by Mericus himself. And of course he is Captain Merrick. 
he and proconsul Claudius Marcus, who knows their true identity and point of origin, which is again a proof that Merrick broke the Prime Directive, bring our heroes to something which looks like a 1970s porn set, and they try to force Kirk to call his crew members down there. The thing is that the proconsul somehow forced Merrick to call his men down, the crew members who adapted are still alive, those who protested died in a gladiator arena. I admit I have no clue what is the proconsul's plan or motivation, at least in this act of the script. I honestly don't understand the reasoning behind most of the plot. Was it ever explained in the original English version? If you watched my videos regularly, you probably know that I'm watching dubbed versions of the episodes, and only very rarely have I the chance to watch the English versions, basically only if I'm home alone. I haven't seen an English version of this episode for many years, so there is a small chance that it does make sense, I don't know. Yes, I know I could rewatch it again in English, but that would mean that this video would be uploaded even later than it is already. So if I indeed am wrong, I'm sorry, let me know. Kirk gets uh, machine guns aimed at his head, but he still manages to warn Scotty that they are in big trouble. But at the same time, Scotty is not supposed to act in any way. And we get to the comedic part of the episode, or to be more precise, I think this part is funny. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be funny. We get a good parody of American network television. This TV network does everything for the ratings, even if it includes showing men killing each other in front of a painting of an Coliseum. This match has McCoy and Spock versus Flavius and some blonde guy, and Kirk is forced to watch it, which apparently should convince him to send his men down to the planet somehow, for some reason. Spock wins and helps McCoy to defeat his opponent, but that's against the rules, so they will get punished. But what will be the horrible punishment? I mean, they had to lower the ratings, which means they need to be seriously punished, right? Well, Kerr gets punished by getting laid by a hot blonde woman. I don't know about you, but I want to be punished like that. Spock and McCoy end up in a worse situation. They get back to jail, where they get to their typical small talk. A few episodes back I said that these little chats belong to my favorite bits of the stories, with a few exceptions. This chat is one of the exceptions. It's not really funny, but pretty serious, and um, you can see for what I think is the first time in Spock's eyes that he was actually hurt by the comments. It feels very uncomfortable, and the whole scene feels like it's not just some friendly banter, but some serious argument between two people who hate each other. Or, in other words, it feels like a random dialogue from Discovery. I guess the writers realized that they went too far because Bones tries to change the topic, and then suddenly the whole tone changes. When Bones says that he is very worried about Kirk too, and then we cut to Kirk having a good time with the blonde woman. The whole sequence is just uh, weird. And not weird in a good sense, when Kirk wakes up the woman is gone, and instead he meets the proconsul again, and Merrick follows him like a good dog. When Kirk refuses to cooperate, he is sent to uh, the quote-unquote arena to die, but Flavius uh, saves him and actually sacrifices his life to save a stranger he met probably only a few hours ago. A complete blackout caused by Chekhov gives Kirk enough time to escape, and with a machine gun in his hands, he runs to the prison to save his friends, McCoy and Spock. 
The Romans tried to stop them, but they used just swords instead of machine guns. During the fight, Medic suddenly changes sides and uses the communicator to call Scotty. He gets stabbed for it by the proconsul, but the Enterprise crew gets beamed safely on board. We end on the bridge of the Enterprise, where Uhura explains that they are not the worshippers of the sun, meaning S-U-N, but the sun as S-O-N. In other words, they are their versions of Christians. And I guess uh, that is supposed to be a twist? Well, this was weird. As I said, I really love the idea of exploring different possibilities using different alternate Earths, but I don't really like the execution. So the story is um, that a landing party beams to an Earth-like planet, try to arrest a Starfleet man who broke the Prime Directive, they get captured, run away with the help of a hot woman, then Starfleet guy gets killed and our crew gets beamed back on the Enterprise, where they have a funny chat at the end of the episode on the bridge. But haven't we seen all of this before? And I honestly don't understand the plan, but as I said, that can just be my personal problem. The tone is also pretty inconsistent, so how to rate it? I thought long about it and I think that uh, on my standard scale between 0 and 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece and 5 is average, it would be fair to give this one 5 out of 10. It's an interesting episode to watch once and then decide if you like it or not. But as always, those were just my opinions. Feel free to write your opinions down in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you have some free time to kill, feel free to watch any of the other videos on my channel. You should see some links on screen right now. The next quick thoughts on video will be about the final episode of season 2. Hopefully it will be uploaded this weekend. So until then, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye.